Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to this Friday night broadcast um, here. I hope you all can hear me clearly coming in. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Brother and Elder Gaja of the Gathering of Christ Church, all right, the regional elder for the UK, Europe, well, Europe, the Caribbean, Australia, and Canada, all right? So welcome you all today. We sent an email out to um to all the regions for people to join in i'm gonna try and see if we can leave this lesson up so if you miss it you can go back and get it all right and um the topics tonight the top tonight's lesson is, is called foundations of christ okay now why we're going here is is it's kind of like a built it's been a built up of what's been going on 
over say the past couple of weeks and the, the lessons and broadcasts that we've been doing um, across the earth all right and um, we sat down with the brothers them and we said that what we see going on here now is is a high we see a high a high traffic if I can call it that or a high um a high volume of, of people coming into the truth right now and learning learning um online and what have you you understand me and what we find is that it's becoming more and more of a of a knowledge grab you follow me where it's it's more what i know more than more than dealing with with the scriptures and um me and the brothers them sat down and we say you know what what we actually need to do is let's take it back to basics let's go back to the let's go back to the foundations all right and if you have a solid foundation on anything that you build then the building will be strong whatever whatever comes from a solid foundation is usually you know will withstand the persecution the pressure you follow what i'm saying and 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 so on and um what better foundations to build than christ what you with me? Yeah. Let's see, you know? Let's see you. and for the people who are um, just coming in for the first time this is a uh, deacon uh, to sat beside me all right yeah so we said we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a lesson um this evening so forgive me brother man. i was just you know um we're gonna do a lesson tonight going into the into the foundations of christ going into some of the precepts them link and um, that you know setting 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 one for a good foundation within this work within this truth within this movement within this body if if you build on christ then everything else that come is you know two or three down on the list and that's what we're finding right now is that a lot of people don't have them basic foundations in christ on Under, that's understanding the scriptures of Christ it's more you know it's the hype it's the internet it's the um you know it's that it's it's that the debate you follow what I'm saying and and I think that or uh, personally and, and I speak from my experience here, I think that this is why we find a lot of people um that come and only with us for a short space of time because the foundations have not been laid properly or they have not given themselves chance to lay foundations all right and, I, and i'll give you an example of what i'm saying here go to the book of matthew for me the 13th chapter please all right got it let's go matthew 13 and start at verse 1 the book of Saint Matthew, chapter thirteen and verse one. The same day Yeshaya out the same day, excuse me, went Yeshaya out of the house and sat by the seaside. Go ahead. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship and sat. Mm -hmm. And the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside so here's christ giving you a parable about the sower all right some seeds fell by the wayside read and the fowls came and devoured them up some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth go ahead and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth go ahead and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away read and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Go ahead. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So Christ is saying, who have ears to hear, let them hear. So he gave them a parable. And the disciples were even puzzled as well as to why is he speaking to the people in parables. You understand me? So they, they even asked him. Jump down to verse um, 11, please. Verse 11. He answered and said unto read, read, sorry, read verse, verse 9. Verse 9, there you go. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, 
Why speakest thou unto them in parables? So the disciples were pondering, Why are you speaking to the people in parables? Read. Verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So Christ is letting them know that there are certain things that you will hear and understand. He says, Who have ears to hear? Everyone have ears. You with me? But it's talking about to, to, un, to get to receive the understanding. So it's given to you to, to, to receive it. You understand it. A lot of us here who come who come to the truth, heard the truth and believed it. Why? Because we, we, were, we, we were given that understanding. The most that blessed us with the understanding that we could hear it. Read. Verse 12. For whoever hath, to, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Read. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. So jump down to the breakdown of the parable right now. Go down to um, verses 18. And let's go see what Christ is actually telling them in parables. Alright, go ahead. Verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. So when somebody hear the word, when, we, when the scriptures go out there, when we teach somebody, give them the understanding and they understand it not, then you always find like a wicked one somewhere nearby. You with me? Like Lucifer does pop up some pop up, you know, in these vessels, yo. Well, don't listen to them. What they're saying is wrong. Come on, don't you know, foolishness. Go back to your church. Or go back into whatever it is that you do. You don't want to hear that. You would make us sometimes people don't this understand. Is not a printer. It's an on ramp, an off ramp. It's an entry point. Salaki, excuse me. Alright? So this is what happened. So so Christ is saying to them, listen, the wicked one come and then take away what was sown. Read. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So this is he who receives seed by the wayside. Come on. Verse 20. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word. And anon with joy receive it. Go ahead. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. So this is someone who hear the truth, believe it, have joy in it, right? But don't form roots. Don't take this is the foundations we're talking about now. Don't allow themselves to get a foundation. Read. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth ariseth. Because of the word, by and by he is offended. So when tribulation and persecution arise now because of the word, right? Then by and by, yo, the person can't deal with it no more. Because why? He, wasn't, he hasn't allowed himself or herself to take root, to build a foundation within the scriptures. So anybody can come with any, with any wind or any, 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 you know, anything. And shake that foundation because why? It wasn't built solidly in the first place. And this is where we find that people go off sometime with this word, not giving themselves enough chance to lay a foundation. And the foundation that you should lay is Christ. It's not about how many conspiracy theories you, you, you can watch in a day on YouTube. It's not about that. It's about laying foundations in Christ so that you can't be shaken. So when the persecution come by and by, when the when people come and say this, or oh, people, you know, saying things regarding to regarding to your faith, then because you have foundations, then you can resist, you can you can defend what you believe in. I wonder if everybody's seeing this. Read. Verse 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. So here's the one though, that received the word, but the cares of the world, right? Meaning that he's worried about the job, he's worried about making the money, he's worried about everything else but this work, but getting this truth out. Then that becomes a problem now. He's the one that receives seed where? Read it. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he become unfruitful. So the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word and he becomes unfruitful. Meaning that he's not bringing any fruits. Whether it be in the spirit or otherwise. 
There's nothing coming forth from him. Why? Because he's more caught up in, in like I said, the money, the money grab. You with me? You understand me? A lot of people, you know, we have come across, and and um, you know, at times I say we will we'll tell you, okay, well, let's go make some money for the truth, and then we can come back and we can do this in the truth, not realizing that the truth needs no money. How much money the most I needs for his thing? You understand me? You can't, you can't, you can't bring money to do the works. You have to do the works, and then whatever, whatever will come after that will come. That's how it works. It's not the other way around. See it? So this is why Christ was speaking to them in parables. All right, and going back to the to the topic of this lessons tonight, uh, foundations of Christ. We have to set a foundation here on Christ, where we we don't choke the word. We don't we don't we don't um when we get persecuted for the word, we don't we don't we don't fall we don't falter when the wicked one comes and tries to take away what has been taught or sown in a, in our in our in, in our spirits. They can't they can't. And if we have a strong foundations in Christ, they can't do that. I'm telling you. Read. Verse 23, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and so, bringeth forth. So he that receiveth it into, into good grounds is the one that hear the word, understand it, and bring forth fruit. Read. And bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Some a hundred, some sixty, some you know, some 30, but there's fruits coming back. You follow what I'm saying? People go out there and, and get this word and make and, and, and multiply it, get bring and add to it. You have some that does come and all they can do is take away from it. You understand me? Rob. So that's why we said that we're gonna we're gonna run a lesson tonight uh, with the titles of Foundations of Christ or Foundations Within Christ. You with me? So that we can establish a strong foundation, understanding the scriptures of Christ from the Old Testament as well as in, within the New Testament, so that we are we we underst we, we we can we can then start to paint a picture of understanding of what the disciples understood and those who followed Christ, you know, back then, going forward, and what what we are expected to do now within Christ within the body of Christ. So. And most I willing, um, we'll be able over the next couple of Sabbaths to really sink into these scriptures and go over. We'll see if we can make this like a two-part series or a three-part series where we can deal with the with the scriptures concerning Christ, both dealing with the with with the, with, with prophecies, dealing with what's been fulfilled, what is yet to come, and also going into the spiritual aspect of Christ as being the high priest of the nation of Israel. So hopefully we'll get to touch all of this. Um, over the next couple of weeks, all right. Now let's go here. Now let's go to um. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, the tenth chapter, please. All right. You there. Let's go Hebrews 10. Let's pick up at verse 7, please. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So Christ says, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Right throughout the book. All right? So we're not going to pick and say, okay, we're only going to read the New Testament regarding to Christ. No, Christ come in the volume of the book. All right? And this was this was something that he even... even the Messiah himself, himself would, 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 would argue with the Pharisees about. Because the Pharisees would come and try to and try to um bring the scriptures to him. You with me? I you know, example saying that oh he broke the Sabbath when he healed when he was healed doing good works on the Sabbath. And Christ would tell them, Well, listen, if you had searched the scriptures, you would have seen me in it. To tell them that they weren't even they, they weren't even following it as what they proclaimed. And let's get that. Let's go to the book of John, please. Let's go to John, the fifth chapter. And start at verse 36, please. The book of St. John, chapter 5, and verse 36. Go on. But I have greater witness than that of John. 
For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do. So Christ is letting them know, I have, I have a greater witness than John, because the works I'm doing are only being done because the Father allows me to do it. That's what he was saying, that whatever he's doing is the will of the Father. Read. Bear witness of me, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. So these works I'm doing bear witness that the Father has sent me because all every time I do a work, the, the all glory goes to the Father. Not it was it taking no glory for himself. Read. Verse 37, and the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Read. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So you have not heard his voice or seen his shape, come on. Verse 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you. And his word is not abiding in you. Read. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Because I am sent by the Father, and you believe me not. And, that, and, and he, he goes as far as Stephen telling them that you believe not even Moses. So you are here claiming to uphold the law and uphold, uphold the, 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 the book, but you don't even believe Moses. And I'm going to prove that. Read. Verse 39, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. So Christ is like, yo, well, why don't you search the scriptures? Because you think you have life in these scriptures. You, you're pulling these scriptures out saying that, oh, I'm breaking the Sabbath. Well, search them. If you search them, you'll find me in them. Read. And they are they which testify of me. And these scriptures are they which testify of me. Read. Verse 14. Jump down to verse 45. Verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. So that, yo, I'm not here to accuse you to the Father. Read. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses. Read. In whom ye trust. Come on. For had ye believed Moses. For, ye, for if you had believed Moses. Ye would have believed me. You would have believed me. Christ, oh. Christ is letting them know that. Listen. If you don't believe me, that means you don't believe Moses. That means you have never read Moses. You don't understand Moses if you don't believe me. Why is he saying that? Read. Ye would have, for if he had believed Moses, you would have believed me. Come on. For he wrote of me. For he did what? For he wrote of me. For he wrote of me. So this is a question that we have to ask even the people who will tell us that the Old Testament is done away with. At the time when Christ said this, there was no such thing as a New Testament. So where was he directing the people them to search? What writings were, was he telling them to go back to? Yes, he was telling them to go back into the Old Testament. Why? Because Moses wrote of him. All right? Examples such as these. Foundations in Christ, brothers and sisters, a topic tonight. Let's go to Genesis 49 for me real quick, please. Right. Okay? And we're going to come back to Hebrews. Um, Hebrews, No, not Hebrews, sorry. To John, the fifth chapter. All right, there's some, there's some more in John I want to get. All right? Let's go to Genesis um, 49. Are you there? Mm -hmm. Okay, Genesis 49, and let's start at the 10th verse. The book of Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. So the Bible says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. All right. Now, who has the scepters? Kings hold the scepters. All right. So here's here's um, Jacob giving you a future prophecy of what of, of, of Christ. And we're going to show you that this is actually Christ is talking about. All right. Let's read it. Read it. Verse 10 again. Oh. The, uh, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lord giver from between his feet. Nor a lord giver from between his feet. Read. Until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come. Shiloh is Christ. Read. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Yeah. Binding his foe unto the vine, and his ashes coat unto the choice vine. All right. So let's see when. So let's see some. Let's get some scriptures here now to um to break down Christ being the, where the scepter shall not depart from him. And also with um with him being a lawgiver. Alright? Let me show it to you here using using the precepts, okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy 10 for me. I mean Deuteronomy um 18 and pick up at verse 18 for me. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18. Go ahead. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. So Christ, so this is what this is what Moses wrote, okay? So that's why Christ was saying, if you believe not Moses, you won't believe me. Okay, read. 
I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my... Read, it, read the story out so Sorry. people can get it. Come on. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. All right, that means that this prophet that will come will be one of the children of Israel. Read. Like unto thee. Like unto thee. Like unto Moses. Why? Because Moses was a lawgiver. So this prophet that, that's coming will give laws. Read. And will put my words in his mouth. And will put my words in his mouth. Read. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Just like what Christ said before in John the fifth chapter. That everything that he did, he did it in the name of the Father. The Father sent him. He wasn't doing his own will, but the will of him that sent him. Read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words. And it will come to pass that whosoever will not listen to those words. Read. Which he shall speak in my name. Read it. I will require it of him. Then the Most High is going to bring judgment for those who will disobey his word. All right. Read. What verse that? Verse 20. Now hold that now, right? Hold that. So we see where Christ is now becoming the lawgiver. A scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. All right? Now let's go see where, where, now, where and how now he became the king, where the scepter never depart. Let's go to um, 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter. All right? And let's pick up at verses 8. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 8. Now therefore so shalt thou say unto thy, my servant David, Thus saith the Most High of hosts, I took thee from the sheepcote, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people. Read it. Over Israel. Come on. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest. So here's the Most High now speaking to David. Alright? And telling David what's, what's going to happen. Read. And have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth come on moreover i will appoint a place for my people israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more Read. neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore so this, as is, a, before time. So this is a future prophecy that the most High was given to david read and as since the time that i command i commanded judges to be over my people israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. Also the most the most high telleth thee that he will make thee an house, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, that, that means David is now David, when you are now dead, read. I will set up thy seed after thee. I will set up thy seed after thee. As we know, Christ came to the loins of David. Read. Which shall proceed out of thy bowels. Read. And I will establish his, his kingdom. Read. He shall build a house for my name. Come on. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. For when? Forever. Forever. So this isn't talking about Solomon for those people who say, oh, this is Solomon. No. Solomon's kingdom never lasts forever. Okay. Now, the disciples understood this prophecy. Okay. Where did they go? How you how do how do we know this? The precepts. Let's go to Acts the second chapter, please. Acts 2, verse 29. Alright? Foundations in Christ, brothers and sisters. We're taking it right back. Alright? And build and building it up again on Christ. And oh, and most I willing over the next couple of weeks, we'll be going into these scriptures, breaking it down, showing you what Christ had fulfilled at his the time when he walked the earth, and what's gonna be fulfilled when he comes back. All right, because there's things left to, left there in the scriptures to be fulfilled. And fulfilled don't mean done. It means to do. Okay? You know they'll tell you in the Christian church that, well, he fulfill everything? No, there's things still left to happen. All right? Prophecies that still need to, need to, need to come true. Okay, so read that for me. Acts 2, verses 29. Acts chapter 2 and verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried. So the disciples of that David is dead and buried. Read. And his sepulchre is with us unto this day. And we know where his grave is. Read. Therefore, being a prophet, 
and knowing that the Most High had sworn with an oath to him, come on, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, another indication that Christ came in the flesh through the loins of David. Read. He would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Exactly. So that's when the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. And everybody's seeing that. Read. Verse 31. He's seeing this before. So hold that down. Hold that. All right. So we see it. We go back to Genesis 49. Got it? Let's read verse 10 again. Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. Until Shiloh comes. Read. And until so Shiloh is Christ. We understand the scepter, the, why the kingship will not move, and we understand the lawgiver from between his feet. You understand that? Read. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So Christ is the one that will gather Israel back together. All right. He will restore the breaches of David. Okay. And establish it as, as of old. That's his purpose. Some people will come and say, um, well, why can't all like Israel just come together? You know, we all know we Israel, you know, just come together and sing Kumbaya. We can't do that because that's not our, our, our purpose isn't to gather the people. Christ does that. Unto him will be the gathering of the people. See that? So a lot of people will come online and, you know, like this, that the, the YouTubers or the, 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 the internet brews, they will come on and they will go, oh, well, we all Israel and we should all come. But we can't do that like that. Based on doctrine, based on understanding, the only, the only one that can pull us all together is Christ. So we can't do Christ's job. We have to do what we are commanded to do, brothers and sisters. Hope everybody's seeing that. All right, unto him shall be the gathering of the people. Read. Unto him shall be the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine and his asses call unto the choice one. Hold up, binding his foal unto the unto the what? Unto the vine. Unto the vine. And his asses call unto the choice one. Unto, and, and his asses call unto the choice vine. So what is that talking about? Let's get some precept um, and some understanding. Go to Luke 19 for me, please. And pick up at verse 30. All right. Foundations in Christ, brothers and sisters. Book of Saint Luke, chapter nineteen and verse thirty. Come on. Saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied. So Christ is telling them to go over into the village next to you, and when you go over there, you're gonna find a, a, a colt tied. You're gonna find a donkey tied up. Read. Whereon yet never man sat. We're on that donkey. No man has never sat on it before. Okay. Read. Loose him and bring him hither. Loose him and bring him here. Read. And if any man ask you, why do ye lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him. And if anybody goes, well, why did you <clears throat> lose the donkey? Tell him this. Because the Lord have need of him. Because my Lord have need of him. Tell them that. Read. Verse 32. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. So they left and found what Christ said to them. That the donkey going to be over there. Go bring him come. Read. And as they were losing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? Read. And he said, The Lord hath need of him. And they said, The Lord hath, just like what Christ told them to say, they said it. Read. And they brought him to Yeshua, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Yeshua thereon. Read. And as they went, they spread their clothes in the way. Go ahead. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the mountain, so Mount when, of Olives. So when he was when he came near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, read. The whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise the Most High with a loud voice. The whole multitude of the disciples started to, you know, make noise, praise the Most High with a loud voice. And the reason why they were doing this, brothers and sisters, right? Not because he was on the donkey, was because that they understood what the prophecies said about the king coming in. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Precept. Let's go to Zechariah 9, verse 9. All right? For those people who just joined us, our lessons tonight 
our lesson tonight, excuse me, is Foundations of Christ. We are actually breaking down Christ through the scriptures from the Old Testament, why the disciples believed, what, what they saw, what they saw fulfilled within their, in, in their lifetimes, and why they were convicted in Christ. All right? So we are, we, are, we are doing this lesson here to show people that we have to build our foundations on the understanding of the Messiah more than anything else. Before, before conspiracy theories, before anything else, we have to have a, a solid understanding on Christ. Solid. A foundation laid that cannot be broken, that cannot be shaken. Zechariah 9 and 9, please. Uh. The book of Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Come on. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Read. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He Behold, is, thy king cometh unto thee. Read. He is just and having salvation. He is just and having salvation. All right. What is Christ's name? Yeshaya, my savior. Yesha, to save. The savior is coming. He has salvation. See it? Read it again, Ark. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Because, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. He is just and having salvation. So go back now to Zechariah and uh, to Luke 19 and pick up where you left off in Luke 19. The book of Luke, chapter 19. Well, verse 30, 32. Verse, um, let's start verse 32 again. Just pick, pick up where you left off. Okay. Uh, verse 37. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Verse 32. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he said unto them. Go straight up to it. You're at the third year. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise the Most High. So the disciples started to rejoice and praise the Most High. Why? Because they understood prophecy being fulfilled. They understood what was written in the book of Zechariah. Here comes the king on the donkey with salvation. Read. The praise of the Most High with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. For all the mighty works that, that they had seen. They are, they are witnessing Prophecies being fulfilled of the scriptures. They are witnessing it. They are seeing it. Hold that. What verse you have there? there? That was uh, verse 37. Hold verse 37. We're going to come back to it. Let's get First John. I mean, let's get St. John 1 and 45. The book of St. John. Chapter 1 and verse 45. Read. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him in whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. So Philip find Nathanael and say, Yo, listen, we have found him who Moses in the law and the prophets did write. So the disciples were witnessing what was going on with Christ, that he is the one that Moses and the prophets wrote about. They're witnessing it. They're seeing it. Like, yo, it's him. He's the king. He's the one that the most are going to put the word in. It's him. Go back to Luke again, please, real quick. Book of St. Luke, chapter 19. Verse 37. And verse 37. Go ahead. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise the Most High with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Most High. Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Most High. They understood who he was. Read. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Read. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. So here, here, here the Pharisees are like, yo, rebuke your disciples. How can they be saying that? Rebuke them. Read. Verse 40. 
And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And they say, yo, listen, if these guys stop rejoicing, then the stones going to make noise. <laughs> so, yo, they, you can't stop prophecy. You can't stop what the Most High said would happen. That's what he's telling them. Read. Verse 41, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. And when he came and he saw the city, he started to cry. Why? Because he knew that the city was about to be destroyed. He knew what was what, what was going to befall the people then. He knew it. So he wept. He saw it, man, and he was, he, he was hurt by it. Read. Verse 42, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this, in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. So if you didn't know this thing that belonged to your peace, but now it hid from your eyes, you can't see it now. Read. Verse 43, For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee. And the, the days shall come upon you when your enemy is going to surround you, cast a trench around you. Read. And compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. And keep you in on every side. Come on. And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. Read. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation and then you because because you don't know what's going on now because you don't understand what's being fulfilled with prophecy right now all of these things are gonna come and take you down this is a judgment that's gonna come to you and Christ knew it that's why he wept he was sorrowful for them because they had no idea what was about to happen to them and we can go and show you through history where these things actually took place we have you know with, with it, within secular history it documented of the Jews been taken down in Jerusalem in 70 AD when um, Nero fabricated um, scapegoats against the, uh, and blamed the Jews for burning down um, Rome, false flag in um, Jerusalem. Yeah, false flag in Rome, excuse me, and blaming the Jews on it. All of this is actually documented that we can go into. So, we're going here right now, brothers and sisters, laying our foundations, in, laying the foundations in, in Christ. Where people can understand the scriptures and what's going on in it and what the disciples saw what they were seeing because the disciples never the, the disciples were, 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 were looking at what moses wrote and looking at what christ was doing and said well listen what we're seeing here is what this man is doing what the prophet spoke about you follow me and that's why when we read earlier in john 5 let's read it again john 5 45. the book is saying john chapter 5 and verse 45 do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, Read. in whom ye trust. For ye have believed Mo For if ye have, for had ye believed Moses, so had, like ye. had you believed Moses, had you believed the Old Testament, had you believed the writings of Moses, read. Ye would have believed me. You would have believed me. So that's why, that's why when the multitude of disciples dwindled down to 12, right, it was only them who believed, who believed what Moses wrote. That was you understand? It was only they, they believed, they believed Moses writing. Everyone else had a problem. And that's what, that's what Christ was showing them. That well, hey, you you're talking about Moses right now, but you can't see me through Moses. How can you not see me through Moses when Mo, when Moses wrote of me? Had you believed Moses, read it. Had ye believed sorry, but if ye sorry, verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. Had you believed Moses, you would believe me. Why? For he wrote of me. Because Moses wrote of me. That's what he was saying to them. And they came after him telling him, oh, he broke the Sabbath and, and all that for healing the man on the Sabbath day. Okay? And Christ said, well, if you were saying, if you were searching these scriptures saying that you have life in them, how come you haven't found me yet? So you are a liar. You're lying. You're not, you're not following Moses. What you're doing here is to get a hype, is to get some level of um, authority over God's people. That's what he was saying to them. Because had you been reading these scriptures, you would have found me in them. Go back to Genesis, please. Genesis 49. Mm -hmm. 
And let's read it again. And 10. The book of Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Read. Until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come. Read. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And unto him shall the, get, shall the gathering of the people be. Christ will gather the people. Read. Binding his fall unto the vine. Go ahead. And his ass is cold unto the choice vine. Read. He washed his garments in wine. So we understand what that meant with the, with, with the donkey, with the, with the colt. They saw it. They understood the writings and saw what Christ was doing and was rejoicing. Because Shiloh is here. Okay. Read. He washed his garments where? He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the, in the blood of grapes. Now, what is this actually talking about now? All right, we're going to get some understanding on this. Go back to the book of John for me, John 5, and pick up at verse 22. The book of St. John, chapter 5 and verse 22. Read it. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So it says he washed, he washed his clothes in the blood of grape, in, in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. So what does that mean right now? We're going to find it out. Read verse 22 again for me, please. St. John chapter 5 and 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So the Father is not going to judge no man, but the judgment is of the Son. So Christ is bringing judgment. Okay? Read. Verse 23. That all men should honour the Son, even as they honour the Father. He that honoureth not the Son, honoureth not the Father so which have sent him. So you don't honour the Son? If you don't honour the Son, you can't honour the Father who sent him. It's simple. Now the judgment has been committed unto Christ. So let's go check the judgment now where the clothes actually change to wine. I mean the the gar the, the, glow, the garments in um, look like it's it, 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 it in the blood of grapes. Let's go to Isaiah 63 please. And we're going to come back to John 5 again in because there's more that I want to get. All right? Isaiah 63 and 1. Read it for me, please. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63 and verse 1. Read. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? So here's something, future prophecy for Christ. Who is this that come from where? Eden. From Edom, read. With dyed garments from Bozra. With dyed garments from Bozra. Bozra is the capital of Edom. Read. This that is glorious in his apparel. Glorious in his apparel. So they're going to see Christ. Apparel glorious, looking shiny, white. Glorious in his apparel, read. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Traveling, read. I that speak in righteousness, read, mighty to save, mighty to save, your salvation again, read, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, Christ, why are you red in your apparel, why are you red, read, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat, and your garments look like him that walking on, 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 on the grapes, when one tread on, on the wine, the grapes splatter the, splatter the garments, read, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people, there was none with me. So Christ said, I have tread on the winepress alone. And of the people, there was none with me. Read. For I will tread them in mine anger. Read. And trample them in my fury. I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. Read. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. So this is a, this is a future prophecy coming, coming from Christ um, that has yet to be fulfilled. Follow me. This is judgment, brothers and sisters. Read. And I will stain all my raiment. And I will stain all my raiment. So that's what he's talking about when he says he shall wash his... Let's read it again in Genesis... Um, Actually, finish off what you have there and then go back to Genesis um, 49. Verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. The day of vengeance is in my heart, and the day of, and the, and the day of my redeemed is come. Go back now to Genesis, 4, um, Genesis 49 and 10. With some understanding here. Genesis 49 and 10. Pick up Gold straight to verse 11. Verse 11. Binding his foe unto the vine and his ass is cult unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. See that? So that's what's going to go on when the gathering of the people comes. When, when Shiloh comes. That they're going to be, it's going to be judgment. It's going to be war. People are going to die. Read. 
verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be red with wine. Okay, read. And his teeth white with milk. And his teeth white with milk. Hold that again and then go now back to um go back to John 5:22 and then go Revelation 19:11. The book is saying, John chapter 5 and verse 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So all judgment has been committed unto Yeshua. This is what he's saying here, brothers and sisters. That's why it says there that he's, he's, he washes his clothes in the blood of grapes. Okay, that's judgment. That's, that's bad times coming for those who don't fall in line with the Messiah. Read. Verse 23. That all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which he hath, which have sent him. He that honoreth not the Son <coughs> honoreth not the Father which have sent him. Read. Verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that hath sent me have everlasting life. So verily I say unto you, hear that he that heareth my word and believe on him that have sent me. So you hear Christ's word and you believe on the Most High that sent him. You have what? Have everlasting life. You have everlasting life. Read. And shall not come into condemnation. And shall not come into condemnation. That judgment will not catch you if you do that. That's why Christ is so important, brothers and sisters. That's why Christ is the foundations of all. If we don't get the foundations in Christ correct, then we stand to be condemned and face judgment. Read. But is passed from death into life. But you are passed from death to life. Read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming. And no, hold on. Is that verse 29? That? That's verse 25. 25. Yeah. Okay, read it. Verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of the Most High. Right, hold up, we're going to get that now. But before that, let's go back to some more judgment with Christ, and then we'll come back. Hope come up, we're going to come back to verse 25, all right? Let's go to um, <laughs> Revelation 19, verse 11, please. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 11. Go ahead. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Read. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. The word of the Most High. In righteousness he doeth judge and make war. That's the judgment coming. See it, everyone? The judgment. Read. That's the judgment that the Father has given Christ to execute. In righteousness he doeth judge and make war. Read. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Red eyes again, linking right back to Genesis 49, linking back to Revelations 1, his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read. And on his head were many crowns. And on his head, head, his head, many crowns. This represents all the kingdoms in which Christ will take down. Read. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Come on. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Clothed again with a vesture dipped in blood. Judgment. Like clothed through the wine press. With the blood of grapes. I have walked, I have trampled the people in my in my anger and my fury, and their blood has sprinkled my garments. There it is. In righteousness he will judge and make war. Read. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of a higher. His name is called the word of a higher. There are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. That's who Christ is, the Word. All right? Now, go back, to, and then, like I said, over, the, over these next couple of weeks, we're going to go into the, into, the, into the spiritual aspect of Christ as well, when, where Christ existed before, before coming through the lines of David. We're going to touch on some of that as well, and what he will do at the, at, 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 at the, at the end when he returns. We're going to touch that. All right? So the foundations of Christ, brothers and sisters, we need to set up, our, get our foundation strong in this word under Christ. Now hold on for my brother. Go back to John 5. And um, yes, most of this lesson that we have, you know, has been taken as John, John 5 has been actually the root, the root scriptures that we have actually used and, 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 and put this together. All right. 
So let's go, let's go there. Let's go John 5 and pick up back at 25 from it, please. The book of St. John chapter 5 and verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of the Most High. Now the hour is coming, and, is, and now is, when even the dead shall hear what? The voice of the Son of the Most High. The voice of the Son of the Most High, read. And they that hear shall live. So what is he talking about? How can the dead live? Alright? How can they live? Now let, let, let us show you what Christ is talking about here. Let's go to um, Ezekiel 20, um, 37. And whole Revelation is 11 for me as well. All right. So what are, they, what, are, what are the dead hearing? The dead hearing this gospel, this true gospel and live. And just like how he said, the time, the hour has come, it was back then and it's not, it now is. Where we have a chance to live. We have a chance for life. Listening to the words of Christ. That's what he's saying to them. All right, Ezekiel 37 here. Precept, read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and, vo and verse 1. Read it. The hand of the Most High was upon me and carried me out of the spirit of the Most High and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Full of bones, dead. Read. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Read. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? So the Most High said to Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? Read. And I answered, O Most High, power thou knowest. Most High, only you know. Read. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. Prophesy unto these bones. So that's why when we go out there, we give Christ, we give the word of Christ to the bones. We prophesy Christ to the bones. We're not prophesying flat earth. We're not prophesying hate anyone. We're prophesying the words of Christ. Because that's how, that's, that's how the dead will have life. That's how me and you, brothers and sisters, will, get, will have life, will live. We have to live through Christ. We have to set our foundations in him. That's where the life come from. Read. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Most High. Hear you dry bones. Hear the words of the Most High. The words that Christ spoke were the words of the Father because he said it himself. He's only, he's only doing what the Father sent him to do. Read. Verse 5. Thus saith the Most High power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. Behold, we get up, we take Christ on, then we come out of the system. We the breath of life comes upon us. Some of us have never been so alive since we have been in this truth. And we can feel it. We feel the difference within our own within our existence. That we are that we are that we are called, we are separate. That we feel, we feel that change. We feel that breath of life. We can't go back into that, into the field. We can't go back into that world. Where are we going to go? How can you go back to Sunday, Sunday church, celebrating Christmas, eating swine, breaking the Sabbath, dealing with each other with variance and hatred? How can you go back to that once you, once you have felt life? How can you? We have felt the life. This is, this is the better life that, that Ezekiel prophesied to the people. We have heard that. Blessed are you here is that you hear. We have heard it. That's why we are here. The foundations in Christ. Read it up. Verse 5. Thus saith the Most High power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. And you shall live. Read. Verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you. Sinews, man. Now you're becoming alive. Right now we're zombies right now. We are the walking dead without Christ. And that's why our foundations need to be found rooted within him. Read. And cover you with skin. 
And cover you with skin, read on. And put breath in you. And put breath in you, read. And ye shall live. And we are going to live. This is what Ezekiel was talking about. This is what Christ is talking about in John 5. Let's go back and get it, please, in John the 5th chapter, please. The book is saying, John, chapter 5, and verse 25. Read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of of the Son of the Most High. So, of the Son of the Most High. So here it is. The dead are now hearing the voice of the, of the Son of the Most High. We are preaching Christ. Christ is moving through the entire earth right now and waking up his people. But the adversary is right there pulling us back into madness. Read it. And the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of the Most High, and they that hear shall live. And they that hear shall live. Just what we read in, in Ezekiel. Once the prophesy, once they hear it, they will live. Read. Verse 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also. And here we go. Christ have the authority to execute judgment. Here is that judgment again. He's telling them. He has the authority to execute judgment. Read. Because he is the son of man. Because he's the son of man. Son of man prophesied to these bones. Ezekiel wrote about him. That's why Christ said, You are the how um go to go to go to um Matthew 5 17. Christian people, if you're watching this, here's the understanding. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Read it. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. I cannot destroy the law or the prophet. He couldn't have. Because all of them wrote of him. They wrote of Christ. Ezekiel, son of man, prophesied to the bones. Who is he talking about? Who is the vision for? The vision is for Christ. That's how the dry bones are going to live. The dry bones can't live without him. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. Christ is fulfilling what Ezekiel wrote, the prophet. <coughs> that the dry bones will hear the voice and live. He's fulfilling that. He's doing what the prophets wrote of him to do. So he can't destroy them. He can't destroy Moses. He can't destroy the prophets. Because if he does that, then he goes against himself. That's why he says to the, to the people, that to the, to the Pharisees, that had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. What if everybody, I hope, hope everybody gets in this and writing down these precepts. Go to Revelation, submit. Revelation um, 11 and pick up at verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They're going to see the dead bodies for three and a half years for a half a jubilee and not suffer them to put them in graves. Why? Because these people aren't dead physically. These are dead in the spirit. These are the ones that the word of Christ are going to come and wake them up again. Christ is the one that wakes us up, brothers and sisters, and bring us to life. He is the one that does that. Not a conspiracy theory on YouTube. Read. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put into graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. These people are making merry over the destruction of the children of Israel. Over the destruction of God's people. 
for the fact that they have not received Christ. For the fact that they can't hear Christ. The fact that the fact that our people can't hear him means that everybody else around us is rich. Everyone else around us will enjoy their kingdom. That's what it means. Because the ones that were supposed to rule the earth are dead. And, 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 the, and, the, and the only thing that can give them life, they reject it. And the only thing that can give them life, even the ones who claim to accept it, accept it and not practice what they have received. But live for strife and fighting. And that's not Christ either. Read it. Start again from where you left off. Okay. Uh, I'll start from verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets... And send gifts to one another. Linking back to Romans 11 chapter. The fall of them be the riches of the world. The other Everyone's rich based on us not having a foundation in Christ. The powers that be can only do what they do because we have rejected a solid foundation in the a solid foundation in the Messiah. That's the only way they can do it. Read. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Yeah, because Israel and Judah tormented them. That's who's referred. That's that's the two prophets. The northern and the southern kingdom. So, excuse me, they need you to reject Christ at all cost. Tonight, sisters, brothers and sisters, foundations of Christ. We are laying the foundations in the Messiah right now, going through the scriptures and building our understanding in Christ from the Old to the New Testament. Christ says he's come in the volume of the book. All right. If we don't understand Moses, we can't understand him. We can't believe him. He said it. All right. All right. Where, where, where you left off, right, yes, brother? What, what, what chapter? Revelation is nine. Revelation is nine. Eleven. Sorry. Eleven. Okay. Read it. Finish it off. Uh, verse eleven. And after three days and a half, the spirit of, the, of life from the Most High entered into them. After three and a half days. The spirit of life came to them because they were prophets. They heard the word that Christ spoke about, that the dead will hear it and live. Read. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon the people who saw them. So that people will fear you if you receive Christ. The other nations... Everyone, even, even your own, they will fear when they see you receive that, when you, when you receive Christ. Not because of what I'm saying, but the Bible said it. Why? Because then they can't trick you no more. You have eyes that see. You have been given life. You are awake. Great fear fell upon them. Come on, read it. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. And the enemies beheld them. And they heard a voice that says, Come hither. And they ascended into a cloud. And the whole lot, we can go, actually go into that next week. Okay? Dealing with the dead of Christ. The, um, the, the resurrection and so on. The dead in Christ, excuse me. We can deal with that next week, all right? So we're going to hold it off right here now, all right? And um, wish everybody a blessed Sabbath wherever you are, all right? Um, tomorrow, a highest will, we're going to be teaching in London tomorrow, Peabody Hill, all right? The postcode is SE218LA. Um, alternatively, email the church at GOCC144UK at gmail.com if you would like to be a part of the gathering here within the UK. All right, and um, someone will get back to you with the details. All right. Um, also, Passover is coming up in Birmingham. 
Um, a message went out today from um, from I think I think brother Jamie sent a message out today um, requesting payments if if we can pay for it tomorrow um, at the respective gatherings, brothers and sisters. Bring it if you if you don't have all of it, bring ah bring part of it. You with me? But we're looking to get all the money in ASAP for it. I mean, without without you contributing, we can't we can't um, it, it, it won't work. All right. So get that sorted out in your respective areas. Um, Purim is next week. I know in certain in some places they're actually doing the celebrations tomorrow based on their location. I mean, um, based on based on the, the 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 convenience. Excuse me. All right. So I think London having London is doing Purim tomorrow, so that should be good. What what the brothers them down there? All right. But Purim actually falls next week, and after that we go into the new year, and then Passover. All right. So a couple of holidays coming up um, very soon. Okay. And um. I think Sister Tommy wanted to ask a question. Tommy, message me um, on the phone and I'll answer your question, all right? I'm going to sign off right now because I do have a meeting to go into, okay? So, with that said, with everybody, um, I'm going to wish wish you a blessed Sabbath and a higher willing will pick up again next week on, on, on this topic, all right? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.